Good afternoon. This is Rich Nass, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, and I'm here for this week's call with Ray Zinn, who, as you know by now, is the longtime former CEO of Micrell. He's the author of a great book and a podcast by the same name called Tough Things First. Good afternoon, Ray. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for inviting me back on, Rich. My pleasure. I'm actually having a lot of fun with these, and hopefully the audience is as well. Okay, so... This week, um, the topic is uh, having to do with the big brother effect and um, the technology that enables that. Um, what, what we're doing is we're providing technology that allows us to track pretty much everything. We can track our kids. We, can, we, have, ca- we have cameras in police cars. And there's also been a lot of backlash about that in, in that some of these people just don't want to be tracked. Uh, I, I know that is the case. Uh, for example, there was a big deal up in, up in New England when the snowplow drivers did not want to be tracked. They weren't being accused of doing anything bad, but they just didn't want anybody to know where they were. Who knows what, what the reason was, was behind that. So let me ask you, is – this is a good thing. You were involved in making that technology. I mean, not directly. You didn't make the end products, but you made the components that went into the systems that helped to create this big brother effect. Is this a good thing in today's world, or have we taken it too far? That's a very good question, Rich. You know, it, uh, technology in all ages, whether you go back to the, to the first uh, steam engine, uh, which connected the East Coast with the West Coast, or whether you're talking about uh, the uh, uh, development of the automobile. Uh, anytime that we advance technology, there's pros and cons. Uh, and uh, the more connected we get, uh, then, you know, we're, we lose some privacy. Uh, and, you know, you can't be, you know, super connected. Uh, uh, you know, having drones be able to deliver packages to your house and, and say, well, but I don't want him to stare into my backyard. Uh, uh, maybe a Sunday there or whatever, you know. Uh, so uh, the more connected we get, the less privacy we're going to have by definition. You know, we got the hackers that come in and, and just hack into our into our network, uh, into our websites. And so, uh, you know, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know, so so if you want to have more connectivity, if you want to have the, the, the advantages that the Internet provides of being able to do those fantastic searches so quickly, and find almost anything you, you want to know instantaneously, uh, you, you don't get that without paying a price, Rich. So where do you stand on this issue? Do you, I mean, what if somebody wanted a tracking, want to put a tracking device on you or in, or in your car? Are you okay with that? Depends upon who's putting that tracking device on me. You know, if it's my enemy, of course, I won't want that. But if it's a friend, I don't care. I mean, if it's somebody who, is, who doesn't want to do me any harm, uh, I, I don't have a problem with that. But if somebody's tracking me for the purpose of, of uh, affecting me or my family uh, in, in, a, in a harmful way, uh, then, and then, of course, I'll, I'll be opposed to that. So, uh, um, again, you know, we're, we're living in a world that's more connected, and as a consequence, uh, there are penalties to be paid. You know, I, I, I never used to lock my home when I was a kid. You know, we never, never locked our cars. We... Uh, we we didn't uh, we didn't worry about such things, but now you know you don't even dare leave your uh, your your uh, uh, valuables in in the back seat of your car even if it's locked because they'll break into it and, and take them. So you know there there is a price to pay for uh, for this connectivity. Okay, let me give you a, a real world example. One of the things that I I think is actually in play today is that. The auto insurance companies will give you a discount if they can track wherever your car goes. Um, what do you think? Would you do that? Well, I, I don't have a problem with it personally. Uh, you know, if, if it lowers my insurance cost, I don't. I don't have the problem with them tracking. Uh, you know, where where my car is. I know they want to protect my car uh, from being stolen because you know there there are high crime areas, and uh, and if and if you have a tracking device in your car that can be activated if it is stolen. Uh, and there are software things that, that allow uh, them to track it if the car is stolen versus if you're just going down to the grocery store, uh, then that, that's good. 
I don't know how they're going to use all that data. Uh, I, I know a study that was recently done for IoT, which is the Internet of Things. They found that 80% of the data we're collecting we're not even using. So, you know, we, we know that the, the cell phone companies are, are, are tracking every single phone call we make, uh, and yet they don't use all that data. Okay, so let me take you back to your CEO days. Uh, would you have the same answer if you're the CEO of a, of a billion-dollar company? Do you want so, – I mean, we don't know who, where the information is going, especially with all the hackers in the world today. Do you want somebody to know that, hey, maybe you just drove your car over to – uh, a potential acquisition or, you know, something you know, along those lines? Well, um, there are ways around that if, you're, if you are concerned uh, in, in the sense the word of, of, um, of them knowing that you're heading over to a, an acquisition. Uh, there's always a, a mutual place like we do. When we did acquisitions, we went to a third-party location uh, to predict the anonymity of, of that transaction. Uh, because uh, just because I drove over uh, uh, to a potential acquire being a acquisition uh, doesn't necessarily prevent somebody from spotting me visually from going there. So we always went to a third location. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's a great conversation for today. So um, I think we will hold it right there. Um, as um, the audience knows, they're certainly welcome to send us any feedback at any time. If there's any topics they'd like us to tackle, to tackle we are more than happy to do so. So that was um, our discussion with Ray Zinn for this week. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Rich.